It's January the 8th today, and Bella is one and a half years old today. We're measuring her to see if she's grown at all, which we think she has, of course, as you all do. She is 14.3. So, I'll just, I'll just um, see if I can. So, don't know if you can see that. She is 14 hands, 3 inches. So, she's grown 3 inches since we last measured her. Yeah. And um, I'll just show you. She's still slightly bum high. So of course she's got, uh, more, well we know she's got more growing to do, um, we don't need a measure to tell us that because she's about her age. And she'll be growing until she's four I should think, before she's fully grown. Maybe some people even say five for an Andalusian, but I think you could, I think four she should be fully grown. She may fill out more, but I think at four she'll be fully grown. So we know she's got more growing to do. She should. Uh, finished about 16 hands. I hope she's not going to grow too much more than that because I will have trouble getting on. <laughs> not as young as I was. I can't spring up like I used to do. Anyway, there she is. A clever chip. We've bought three fly rugs and the reason we've bought them now when there's no flies is because the sales are on and that makes quite a difference when you're buying three rugs to the cost. Also, we have more choice because nobody is buying fly rugs now. Because fly rugs are lightweight because it's summer, uh, they tend to be flimsy and they last maybe two years if you're lucky. Ferrug and Apollo are the same length. They take a six foot rug. Of course, Apollo is a much bigger in the shoulder and uh, a deeper body, but they have made this rug uh, with skirts, so I feel that it was worth trying this rug on Apollo as well, and it fits him. It also has a um, piece that goes under the tummy, as you can see, which will help them keep the flies off the tummy as well. I have gone for the zebra pattern again because it has been proved scientifically that flies get disorientated with that pattern. They have a gusset at the, where the leg is, um, where they've got more material, which means that they can move freely. It's not something that they wear a lot. They only wear it when, in summer when we've got flies. Luckily this summer we didn't have many. Well, I say it this summer because it's now, it's now January the 8th. So, uh, no, I meant last summer. We didn't have a huge amount of flies, but uh, the summer before we did. So you've got to be prepared. And, very kindly, Jean Michelle has bought Bella a rug, and there was enough left over for two other rugs because they are in the sale. So it's just pay you to buy early for fly rugs because in, in the summer when everyone wants one, they're top dollar <laughs> or pound in our case. Yep, yeah, so happy with that. Very happy with that. No need to try for rugs on because it fits Apollo, it's going to fit for rug, no doubt about it, because they do. Um, Underneath the buckles do shorten, of course. Um, I've not come across a fillet string where it's actually covered in plastic, which of course is a brilliant idea, isn't it? Because you know how fillet strings... Well, you know why fillet strings are called fillet, don't you? Because they get filled with poo. So, uh, yeah, there's a plastic covering over that fillet string. Excellent idea. We're waiting for Bella's fry rug to arrive. They didn't have a five foot nine in this particular rug, so we've ordered a different one. Roll on summer, <laughs> where we can get it out because we're being pestered by flies. I take it all back about what I said about flies and hating the flies in summer. I'd, I'd take flies over this soggy wet weather any day of the week. Got to take a little video of Farouk because he's the only one that's not been on camera today. <laughs> he's a good boy, that's actually just steaming up the lens there. <laughs> Hello. Hello. 
just have to show you, my jacket. <laughs> my jacket matches his rug. He's the only horse with matching accessory of a human. <laughs> Good boy. So, fly bonnet and numner match, so that's good. Thank you, Sugary. This is our dining room as it is now. Ceiling is kind of dark with the ivory colors on the beam. Beams and the plasterboard in between is ivory as well, slightly lighter, but it gives a bit of a dark impression. And there is still a, a hatch there that leads to the kitchen. But since we've got a new kitchen and there's a cupboard on the other side, it's not functional anymore. So that will be boarded in and plastered over. That's to create a nice even wall there. This is the, the bay window where the roof has been replaced and this had a really bad roof. Completely, the woodwork was completely rotten underneath the covering, and th that gave us some substantial leaks over time, which is not good. That's all dry now, so the plaster and decorator can can do his job properly and give this a different look. All the, the chipboard will be taken off, of course, before it can be replastered. So, first job now is to get everything out of this room which will probably take us most of the day and take the, uh, the wallpaper off to make it ready for the tradesmen to do their marvellous jobs. A few photographs as a reminder of what we had done in the summer. There's not that many people that do quality lead work. Glyn Edwards we were lucky to have and that's his little signature so that if you ever see that you know it's Glyn Edwards work. We're using the same plaster as we used for the lounge book. <laughs> we are using the same colour paint on the walls as we did for the lounge. change round of the furniture. You'll notice that we don't have any blinds or curtains in our dining room. This is because we like the look of the mullion windows 
and there's nobody that can walk past us unless they go into the field. So we don't feel the need to be shutting the outside out, if you see what I mean. Wren's recovered the stool and the dining room chairs. I'm going to highlight the design there on the fireplace. Uh, I'll probably go for a similar colour to the wall, or I may go and choose one of the colours from the tiles. Haven't decided yet. mothers. They were bought for her wedding. That's the copper salabar. Not sure if I pronounced that correctly. It's for hot chocolate anyway. That's all we need to know. quite low to the ground and on his lower legs but left quite a lot on uh, his upper body and uh, I don't do his tail because that's his pride and joy, his little tail. We haven't gone there to summon people in for, for dinner. <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> and, um, that's a rotating book um, case underneath there. And antique um, decanters. They never get filled, I'm afraid. We never have um, that sort of thing. We would like our red wine and uh, Prosecco and uh, reds and Steve like a uh, gin and tonic. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please don't forget a thumbs up and we do love to read your comments. TTFN!